Okay, let's get right into this. Uh, I'm going to show you how to animate some stuff with CSS, and uh, we'll use a little bit of JavaScript as well. So um, let's start by putting a div on the page, and we'll title it, or we'll not title it, but we'll give it a class um, of menu. Okay. And we will give other divs inside of it a class menu item. And we're going to build this out kind of like a left nav styling, just for the sake of example here. Um, let's give these some variation here. Item one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Save that. Okay, and then let's give our div some styling. So uh, actually, first I'm going to um, put a margin zero on the body, and that'll keep the, um, the margin off of the body so that we can position our menu items easier. Um, let's do... Um, a width of 250 pixels for the menu itself. And then uh, the menu items, we'll give them some styling. Menu item, we'll say each menu item has font family, Arial font, okay. Font size, we'll go like uh, 20 pixels. Um, the color for the lettering will be white. And for the background color for each item, uh, we'll do like a, like a gray. For the uh, padding, do 20 pixels top and bottom. 30 pixels side to side. Um, and then for the margin, we'll do 15 pixels top and bottom, zero pixels side to side. I'm going to save this, go to the browser. This is what it looks like so far. I'll give some rounded corners to this for styling. Um, say border, top, right four pixels, um, and then this is radius, top right radius, and this is going to be bottom right. Also gets four pixels, so if we refresh that, you'll see there's some smoother corners on it. Okay, let's say we want to animate this from off the screen so it slides in. Uh, one way to do this would be we tie an animation to it here. So we, we say animation name, and we give it a name, you know, slide from left, whatever. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, the important thing is it matches what you put in the keyframe command over here. And what you do is you define a from style and a to style. And it'll animate keyframes in between at the duration you specify. So we have to specify a duration as well here. Let's say 1.5 seconds. That's how long. And here we can tell it... Um, that we want to go from off the page, so that's left, and we'll say negative 250 pixels. The reason I chose that number is because the width of the main container that holds these menu items is 250 pixels. So that means that that's how far to the left we're starting at, and then we want to slide to left zero, which would be all the way on the page. Um, see what we have so far. Nothing. All 
right. I know why. L it doesn't understand left because we haven't given it a position. We need to tell it, you know, that it, it, it has the position. Let's use relative. Okay. It won't obey left without, you know, position relative or position absolute defined. So, um, the only thing is this is a little boring, right? Because they're all moving in from, you know, the left. Maybe we want these to, to come in like uh, one at a time or, or in maybe we want the first one to land first and the second one to land second. So, I mean, there's some ways we could do this. Um, I would use JavaScript and uh, the way you would do that is down here in your JavaScript, you would build a little script for animating. Okay, first thing I'd wanna do is define a variable, something like, you know, time to animate. And um, I would start that at 200 and that'll represent 200 milliseconds. And that'll be the iteration, like the first one will be 200 milliseconds, the second one, 400 milliseconds and so on. Um, next thing is I need to tell it what we're targeting here. So we'll just say something like menu items and we will target our menu items here and we will count them. So this will allow us to um, put as many of these in here as we want and have the script still work by counting them like this. Um, so then from here, we will start a for loop to loop through each one of these. So let's make a for loop. And we'll use um, i equals zero. Okay. Um, and then we'll, we'll compare that to, um, you know, the number of menu items we have. And then we will increase I after each iteration. And here, we need to say plus one. And then in our loop, we're going to start an animation. So we're going to target and say animate, okay. And the thing we're gonna target is this. And not only that, but we're gonna target the nth child of that. But in here, we're going to put I. So that way it targets the first one first, and the second one second, and so on. It goes through like that. Okay, next we're going to tell it where each one should land at the end of the animation. So we want it to land at left zero for each one. Um, we, uh, we don't need that. Okay. And then... Um, here, we would put the duration of time, like 200 milliseconds, right? But instead, what we want to do is we want to kind of make the first one go faster and the second one slower and that, that kind of thing. So we're going to use this instead, this variable. And we're going to put that here, and then at the end of each iteration, we are going to add it. We're going to add 200 to itself. So it'll be two, four, six, eight hundred, and so on. So let's see what we have so far. Oh, up here, we don't need to use this anymore, this animation. But we do need to tell it that the left starting position for each of these is negative 250. <clears throat> so you see what we're doing is we're starting it off the page, and then we're using JavaScript to bring each one on the page at different times. So let's see what the result is. 
So that's kind of cool. Now you have kind of a stylish menu loading in. Uh, let's say uh, we want to give this some simple point A to point B animation on hover. And that would be the perfect time to use a transition. So a CSS transition looks like this. Let's take our menu item and uh, we'll put a hover style on it. Okay. In here, um, just to make sure it's working, let's put, you know, the cursor becomes a pointer. And then let's go test that. So on hover, yeah, I'm getting the cursor pointer on hover. So I know that this is working so far. So <clears throat> let's say on hover, I want to scale this. So uh, I'm going to transform it uh, just a, a little bit. So we'll do scale and uh, we'll do 1.1, 1.1. So we're scaling it up just a little bit on hover. And if I do this now, it'll be kind of abrupt because there's no animation on it. So the issue is a spelling error. I didn't have an N here. So it's transform scale one one. So let's look at it again. Yeah, you see how it it's like the one that I'm hovering on is, is larger. But it, there's no animation to this. So let's put a little animation on it. What you do here is um, you put a transition on it like this. Transition. And you're going to give it, um, first you're going to say what. And uh, we, we could target just one style or we could target all the styles. If you target all the styles, it's scalable for later, but it's a little heavier load. But you can just say like transition all of it. Um, and then let it take 0 0.15 seconds or whatever time you put in there. And we'll use linear. This is for, you can do easing effects, but we'll just stay simple right now. We'll just say linear and uh, refresh this. And when I hover over this, now we get a scale animation. See that? And you could add more styles to that too. I mean, like if you wanted, you know, these if you wanted the radius to change, you know, you can add that. <clears throat> Let's say the radius uh, becomes nine. See, it gets rounder. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. There are some CSS animation techniques for you to play with. Um, also a little bit of JavaScript in there. Uh, keep in mind, if you're using transition for your animations, you're just going from point A to point B. Whereas with an actual like CSS animation, the one with the keyframes, you have more control over it. So, you know, if you dig deeper, you can find that you can actually animate like from point A to B to C and so on. Um, transitions are also usually triggered by some event, you know, like a hover, for example, it's very common to use, you know, a transition there. Um, JavaScript, you can use dot animate. Another technique they use, they kind of mix and match is they'll put um, like a class on something. Like for example, uh, for a hamburger menu, they might put a class on it that's like open. And if the, if the menu is open, then it runs the CSS animation. So it's targeting the item with the class on it, and you're using JavaScript to toggle that class. That's another technique. We won't get into that here, but you can look into that as well. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. See you later.